All right, so stop me if this sounds familiar. You've got a really good looking Figma mockup that you want to turn into React Next.js Tailwind code, but you're kind of like, ugh, it's going to be a hassle because you know that there's going to be a lot of grunt work along the way to make that conversion and just to build out the HTML itself. Well, I've got good news for you. There is a fantastic plugin that I've found for Figma called Visual Copilot. It's from Builder and it's going to save you probably 80% of your time in that conversion of going from Figma to HTML and leave you, as any good AI should, with a really exciting work of web development, which is building out the application. Let's get right into it. All right, so here we've got our example. It's a two-page layout. Notice that we have just the desktop layout here, not the mobile layout. You've got a home page, and then you've got the products page. Looks pretty good so far. So let's go and select the product page and start converting that first. So I'm just going to go over here to our development mode, and then I'm going to select the Builder IO plugin. And then I'm going to select the page I want to convert, so that would be their home page. Looks pretty good so far. So let's hit the generate code. And notice it has that nice little call at the top that it's going to make it 50 to 80% faster to do this conversion. It's not saying it'll do everything, but it's going to give you a really good starting point. All right, let's have a quick look around. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and we can see that we have both the desktop layout and the mobile layout. And I got to say, this looks really good. So thumbs up on the AI. Nicely done, sir. And you can see it's already doing some of the mobile work. For example, this featured product carousel here maps into the featured products down here in the mobile view. And you can see how it's going from a horizontal layout here to a vertical layout there, just as you would expect. So it's going to be doing a lot of that responsive work for us, which is a huge time savings. All right, now let's go take a look at the code that it's created and see if it's any good. All right, so we got down here, got our code. And just as a first pass, I think this actually looks pretty good. It is developing that for React and Tailwind. You can select different frameworks, for example, Quick or Solid or Vue, Angular, what have you. And then you can also select how you want to do the styling. I've chosen Tailwind, I guess, which is the default. There's also Emotion, Style Components. So you can do your CSS however you want. That's cool. And then there's the Fast Quality Selector. So if I go to Quality, this is actually a pay-for upgrade. It's going to take the original LLM output. So I believe what Builder has done is they've actually gone and trained their own LLM. It's a deterministic LLM that converts the Figma mockups into code. They actually have a way to run that again through GPT and further refine that code using this quality option. That's going to be slower, but it also gives the ability to do this additional AI prompting at the bottom. And they give you some examples, for example, like uh, use props or break it into multiple components. And then it's going to then run that code through GPT with that prompt and hopefully give you some good results from it. So that's really cool. But for this example, we're just going to stick with fast. So Builder is a CMS system, but you don't actually have to use the Builder CMS in order to make use of this tool. You can actually just have it go and create these Builder CMS pages for you, and then you just do the copy to clipboard, and then you take it and put it into whatever application you want. So let's go build a Next.js application, take the code, and put it in there. So I'm going to use Create Next App to build our app. We'll call it Shoe App. And we use all the defaults, including Tailwind CSS. We'll bring it up in VS Code. And let's go over into source and then page.tsx. And now we're going to go and replace the entire contents here with what was created by Builder. Just paste that in there. And then we'll remove the React. And then I'm going to export this as the default function. We'll call it home and remove the props. And now we'll just give it a go. We'll bring up our terminal. Do pm pm dev. And go take a look. All right, it's coming up. It's a little bit slow. And that's because these images are actually coming out of the CDN. So over here, you can see that when it's generated the image tags, it has brought those in from a CDN. So what I've done 
is I've created a handy helper script. It's located in the description right down below in a gist, and it's going to go and grab all of these images, download them locally into the public directory, and then replace all of these image tags with image components from Next.js. Pretty cool, right? So let's go and bring in our little script tag. So this is the download images script. Again, you can get the link for that in the description right down below. I'll go raw, I'll grab that, and then bring that over in our app. I'm gonna create a new directory and file. Scripts, download images.js, paste that in there. And now we can see at the top, there's some documentation on how to use it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the original source file, so that would be source app page.tsx. We're going to pipe it through our new script. That's this script right here that we're looking at. And it's going to one, download all those images, and then it's gonna create React that has those image components from Next.js, can put all that out standard out, which will then pipe into pbcopy. Now pbcopy is a handy little OSX helper app that basically goes and takes whatever comes in standard in and then puts it into the paste buffer so that we can then paste it into our app. So let's hit save here and then just grab this whole script, bring up our terminal, run it. And now we can see if we look over into public, we can actually see something really cool. It's actually downloading the images as we speak. It's really neat. It's a combination of PNGs and SVGs. But now those are all going to be local, right? So that's going to be a, a lot faster. So let's go and get rid of that. And we don't need download images anymore, but we do need the paste buffer that it just created. So I'm just gonna select all that, hit paste, fingers crossed, and it worked, so cool. All right, so we can see that it turned the image tags into image components. And you probably wanna go and change out these image names. Obviously they're just GUIDs, that's not particularly informative. Also wanna change out the alt text over here, but otherwise, I'd say it looks pretty good. So let's uh, let's try this out. So let's do PMPM PM dev again. And we'll go back over to our arc and then into localhost and let's just do refresh. And boom, a lot faster. I mean, the initial load is a little bit pokey because the image tag is gonna go and try and create, I guess, multiple versions of it, but much, much faster. So very quick. Nice to have those images downloaded locally. So cool. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go and because we've got a shared header between this page and the product detail page, we want to go and take that shared header and move that into the layout. So let's go back over into our code and figure out where that shared header starts and ends. So down here, these images are, as far as I know, these little buttons here. So the header ends about there. And then where does the footer start and end? So the footer all the way down here has categories in it. So let's go look for categories. There we go. Categories. Here's probably our logo. So there we go. Everything in between those two line breaks is our content. So let's go and copy that. Go into layout. So in here, we want to go and take that children and we want to go and wrap that in the header and footer. So let's turn a couple times, we'll paste that in. So we're gonna go take children down here, cut that, and then replace everything within those two lines. Nice. Now we need an image tag, so let's go grab that from the original code. All right. Looks good. So the layout side is good. Now we need to remove the layout from the original code. So I'm going to go and replace this with a fragment and then get rid of the header and the footer, leaving just the content. OK, looks good. All right, so now our page has just the content. Our layout has the header and footer. Ideally, you'd want to go and take the header and the footer and move those out into their own components. I'll leave that to you. So we'll hit save here, see how we go. And it's save and everything went refresh and everything looks good. So let's go and do the next page. So that would be the detail page. So I'm going to create a new route here called products. 
and then a parameterized ID, and then page.tsx. And you know what? Let's just export a default function and return hello. Hit save. Okay, let's go back over here and we'll go to products one. And there we go. Where's hello? Where probably white text. So let's hit class name, text black. And there we go. Hello. Nice. Okay, cool. So we've got our container. The layout is doing what the layout should. So let's go and take the contents of the product detail page from Figma and route those through it. We'll go back over to our Figma. And if we look at the page, right, if we got everything, then we get the header and the footer. So what we want to do is get just this section in here. So let's see. So that's group seven. There's a footer down there. Group six, group seven. Not 100% well organized, but it looks like group seven is what we want. So let's generate code again. This is a smaller subset, so it's a lot faster to generate. Looks really good. And of course, if I wanted to, I could go here into quality and make any changes that I wanted to using GPT. Let's just stick with the fast. So I'm, again, I'm going to do the copy here, copy to clipboard, and take it in here. And again, export this as our default function. And just because I know I'm going to need it, I'm going to bring in image, hit save. Let's see, how do we do? All right, looking pretty good. And look at that. That is great. Nice. Okay, got the header, got the footer. Beautiful. Love it. All right, so let's go and do the fix up where we download the images. So we're going to cat our implementation file. So that would be the source, app, products, ID, page.tsx. And we'll pipe it through that node, scripts, download images, and back into our copy buffer. So we'll bring it into PB copy. Looks good. All right, let's hit save. All right, all right let's get it go. <laughs> let's see. If I hit Paste. Looks good. Got all the image tags. Let's try. All right. Awesome. So now everything is out of the CDN. It's in our local application. It's under our control. Fantastic. Love it. All right. So as you can see, a really nice way to get your initial start on your application code. But of course, there's so much left on the table for us as web developers to complete this. People keep talking about how AI is gonna take all of our web development jobs. Well, I mean, how much is left to be done here? So, I mean, think about it. First off, designs aren't always this easy. So this is a pretty reasonable, sane design. Oftentimes you don't get that from Figma. Figma is so open-ended, you can do all kinds of stuff. And honestly, going and turning that into Tailwind or in any kind of actual implementation in HTML and CSS can be more of a conversation between you and the designer and the product manager as to what's feasible. So an AI isn't going to have that conversation that is up to you to have. So right off the bat, there is some work for you as a web developer. Now, next up would be responsiveness. Now, it's done a really good job here of doing a basic responsive layout, but there's a whole bunch of unknowns. When it comes to the nav, do you want a hamburger menu for the carousel of featured products down here, like this one you may also like? Is that going to be responsive? How is that going to be responsive? And when it comes to things like this carousel here, is that the same carousel as we wanted to use here down in featured products? Do we want to reuse that? So there's questions of reusability and maintainability. And then, of course, there's the 800-pound gorilla in the room, and that's the implementation. So this is just images. There's nothing behind the scenes here. So we've got to go and hook this up to microservices, probably for the nav, to get all the nav menu options, for the products, to get all of the product information, both on the detail page and on the home page. We've got to connect it to e-commerce stuff so you can actually buy things. We've got to make it accessible. We've got to make it internationalized. There's just a whole bunch of implementation left to be done here. And that, to me, is the real value of stuff like Visual Copilot. 
it's gone and done all of the grunt work for me so that I can go and do what I like best, which is going and building the application that has this awesome UI on top of it. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this quick walkthrough of Visual Copilot. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. I'm doing a full Next.js course called Pro Next.js dot dev. You should go over there today and go and sign up for the newsletter. You will get a full course on state management in Next.js for free by signing up. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.